Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Body Bags. It's week 235, and I'm your Sunday host, DBougie86, here to give you that Sunday review, guys. Yes, and if you've been following the channel this week, you guys know that it's Blue Underground Week. And you know me, if you know me personally, I love Blue Underground. It's one of my favorite companies and uh, labels out there right now. Uh, very uh, interesting what titles they have been putting out lately because it's not as much as they used to, but they still put out a good abundance of stuff and content that makes them still one of the prime companies out there. And it's a company that I always love, of course, if you don't know the history of Blue Underground, it's owned by uh, William Lustig, who directed Maniac. And he also uh, started when Blue Underground, when it was like a side like company with Anchor Bay, and then he left Anchor Bay and then made his, his own company and took a lot of films with him. And a lot of those films, like the Italian ones, went to Blue Underground. So without further ado, the one I chose to do today is a 1975 Giallo directed by, I always butcher this guy's name, Amanda Crispino. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And of course it is titled Autopsy. Yes. Uh... This film stars uh, Mimsy Farmer, of course, if you don't know who she is. She's actually one of my favorite, like, uh, uh, giallo actresses. Uh, I know her most notably for Four Flies in Grey Velvet, Dario Argento's film. She also is in uh, Lucio Fulci's The Black Cat. And one of my favorite giallos of all time, she's in The Perfume of the Lady in Black. Now, this one also stars Barry Primus. And it also has Ray Locklove in it. Yes, Mr. Ray Locklove himself stars in this one. Now, the main plot of this one, we're introduced to this weird, like, thing that happens in Florence where uh, a lot of mass suicides start happening right at once. But uh, one of these suicides is, like, this young woman who actually, the doctor actually uh, notices and sees who she is and this doctor is played by Mimsy Farmer and she actually met this woman previously in the beginning of the film so she ends up buddying up with her, this uh, woman's uh, brother priest who also has like a dark past himself and trying to solve the mystery of what is going on and maybe his uh, sister's uh, suicide really isn't a suicide. It's really somebody murdered her and there might be a darker, sinister plot ahead. That's pretty much the gist of the plot of this one. I'm going too crazy into it because, you know, Giallos, they have very, very, like, a uh, crazy plot sometimes. And this one's no exception. Now, my thoughts on the film. Very odd beginning to this movie because uh, it has some very, like, nightmarish scenes of, like, mass suicide happen and it's very some of them are fucked up and weird in that sense like uh not to give too much away because this isn't really a uh, important plot moment in the movie it's just the setup of the movie uh there's this one scene where this guy ended up like killing his family and he ends up shooting a machine gun at himself so it's like he's pointing the gun at himself and this pulls the trigger i'm like is that even possible? You know, it's like some weird things like that. It's like, it makes you think a little bit. But it doesn't take you out of the experience of the movie because it's so oddball and left field that a lot of these people are creating mass suicides to begin with that I enjoyed it for that. You know what I mean? It's nothing to, like, take me out of the movie. Uh, the characters are what they are. Ray Locklove plays a real fucking, like, uh, sleaze bag in this one. He's very controlling the... Uh, towards Simona, who is Mimsy Farmer's character, as we see, he she uh, he plays her like love interest in a way, and he's very odd. He there's a lot of like character arcs and very odd uh, things that happen with him, uh, and same with like the priest character. There's a lot of like uh, uh, indirectly like red hair in this turn to priest, which which this isn't really a spoiler, but in, like certain other like uh, Giallo films. This is like the perfect red heron for a priest to be like the killer. So with that being said, uh, really like like uh, like the little subplots that happen on this one. Like there's weird things that happen within this one that I do like. Like uh, 
there's this weird like subplot with like uh, the landlord and the dog who's the landlord's just a piece of shit too so yeah you know it's like crazy like that especially what he does to his dog he was like ooh, you know what i mean like fuck him yeah but there's a lot of like hypnotic scenes within this film that are very well done and well shot and a lot of like great like sensual scenes and the score builds off those score of course is done by ennio maricone who uh if you watch a giallo with a Maricone score, there's a lot of themes that go in different like types of giallos. This one has a mixture. It's very eerie in some sense, but it has like that like a uh, very like gracious feel to like some of his like more like uh, uplifting giallo scores. If that makes any sense, it's uh, a very interesting score. It's very eerie in some aspects, especially like the hypnotic like weird scenes. And uh, there's also like a little like. Uh, uplifted music that happens within it like typical Maricone fashion uh yeah this is a very like non-talked about giallo that i really enjoy uh I like the characters and even though like they're not characters that you're gonna love there's a lot of like uh, character traits as we learn as the film progresses that makes them kind of unlikable characters but you still follow them for the most part because of the situations that they're in and uh, really enjoy Mimsy Farmer in this film. She's the highlight. Uh, the way that her she acts towards like uh, certain male characters in this movie is just fucking bizarre as all hell. Especially with the, what the male characters are doing, you know. Especially to Mimsy Farmer in this movie, it's like what the fuck you? Because you don't expect it, you know. It's fucking crazy. But like I said, great hypnotic scenes. A great scene that happens within like a wax museum. I'm not gonna spoil it for you. That's all. I'm gonna give away of it. And fucking, there's a great hypnotic score to this one that really sets the tones. It's a very non-talked about giallo, and I think a lot of people should check it out. So if I had to write autopsy, I'm going to give it a solid 8 out of 10. Like I said, it's a little clunkily in some aspects of it, in the story, and like some aspects of like uh, what the fuck moments and shit like that. But it's enough that keeps you interested in a lot of like good scenes, like I said, and like uh, good acting in, in the most part. So yeah. 8 out of 10 for Autopsy. All right, guys, that's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, back next week with another one for you guys. So I'll see you then. Peace out.